Wilson's disease. Wilson's disease is an autosomal recessive disorder that affects the excretion of copper, leading to a reduction in copper secretion into bile. This, in turn, causes the accumulation of copper primarily in the liver and central nervous system, as well as in the cornea, kidneys, joints, and cardiac muscle. As a result of this copper buildup, impaired function occurs in these organs and tissues. Wilson's disease has an estimated prevalence ranging from 1 in 30,000 to 1 in 50,000 individuals. It is important to note that this disorder does not show a preference for a specific gender and affects all ethnic groups equally. While the clinical symptoms typically emerge between the ages of 10 and 40, it is possible for the disease to manifest at any age. Wilson's disease is a condition that is observed globally, with an estimated prevalence of approximately one case per 30,000 live births in most populations. However, recent data from population screening using molecular sequencing in the United Kingdom indicates the possibility of a higher prevalence, reaching as frequent as one case per 7,021 individuals. When examining the estimated incidence based on genetic analyses and geographic location, the numbers vary. For instance, in Sardinia, Italy, the reported incidence is approximately one case per 10,000 people. In Japan, the incidence is approximately 3.3 cases per 100,000 people, while in Costa Rica, it is approximately 4.9 cases per 100,000 people. Copper, as an essential trace element, plays a vital role in numerous physiological processes and acts as a cofactor for essential metabolic enzymes. On average, the typical uptake of copper from the small intestine amounts to approximately 1 to 2 mg per day. Once absorbed, copper in the bloodstream becomes bound to amino acids, allowing it to be transported to the liver and various tissues throughout the body. Under normal circumstances, any excess copper present in the body is efficiently excreted into the bile. This excretion process helps maintain a proper copper balance within the body and prevents the accumulation of copper to harmful levels. However, in the case of certain conditions, such as Wilson's disease, there is a disruption in the copper excretion mechanism, leading to reduced secretion of copper into bile and subsequent accumulation in various organs, particularly the liver and central nervous system. ATP7B, AP1 type ATPase involved in copper transport, plays a crucial role in maintaining copper balance in the body. Mainly present in liver cells, hepatocytes, it facilitates the movement of copper into the secretory pathway. An important task of ATP7B is to bind copper to ceruloplasmin, a protein that carries copper, ensuring its proper transport. However, when mutations occur in the ATP7B gene, they cause structural and functional changes in the ATP7B protein. These mutations disrupt the normal process of copper transport, leading to copper accumulation in various tissues and organs. Wilson disease is inherited in an autosomal recessive manner, requiring both parents to carry the mutated gene for their child to develop the condition. Carriers of a single mutated gene typically do not display symptoms. In Wilson disease, the abnormal buildup of copper primarily affects the liver and central nervous system, resulting in the characteristic symptoms of the disorder. The initial symptoms of Wilson's disease often lack specificity and commonly manifest as a diverse combination of hepatic, neurological, psychiatric, and ocular findings. Patients may experience a range of symptoms, and the presentation can vary depending on the predominant manifestation. Those with predominantly hepatic symptoms tend to exhibit symptoms at an earlier age, typically before the age of 10. Surprisingly, a notable percentage, 5% to 23%, of individuals may present without any noticeable symptoms. Common presenting symptoms include acute liver failure, which has been reported in approximately 17% of cases. Other common symptoms include the sudden onset of jaundice, recurrent jaundice, anorexia, or vomiting, which have been observed in 14% to 44% of cases. These nonspecific symptoms can make the diagnosis challenging, as they may be attributed to other conditions initially. Furthermore, it is important to note that in addition to the aforementioned symptoms, patients with Wilson's disease may also present with other clinical manifestations. These can include the presence of ascites, fluid accumulation in the abdominal cavity, or edema, which has been reported in approximately 14% to 50% of cases. Hemolysis, characterized by the breakdown of red blood cells, has been observed in 5% to 20% of patients. Additionally, a small percentage of individuals, 3% to 10%, may experience hemorrhagic diathesis, a tendency to bleed excessively, 
or variceal hemorrhage. In individuals presenting with neurological manifestations of Wilson's disease, it is common to observe a history of symptoms associated with movement disorders. These symptoms may include tremors, incoordination, sloppy handwriting, dysarthria, difficulty speaking or slurred speech, muscle stiffness, rigidity, postural abnormalities, gait abnormalities, or excessive drooling. The range of neurological symptoms underscores the impact of copper accumulation on the central nervous system. These manifestations can significantly affect a patient's motor function and coordination, leading to difficulties in tasks requiring fine motor skills or even simple movements. Neuropsychiatric symptoms associated with Wilson disease typically emerge during the second or third decade of life, although cases have been reported in children younger than 10 years. These symptoms manifest as altered behavior, personality changes, depression, and cognitive decline. Additionally, patients may exhibit other behavioral abnormalities, such as temper tantrums, anxiety, memory loss, difficulty concentrating, impulsivity, and a lack of inhibition. On physical examination of patients presenting with neurological diseases, several notable manifestations may be observed. These can provide valuable insights into the underlying condition. In the case of Wilson's disease, the following findings are commonly encountered. Tremor. Patients may exhibit tremors, which can manifest in various forms. Tremors can occur in any part of the body, but they are most frequently observed in the hands. These involuntary rhythmic movements can lead to postural and gait abnormalities. Dystonia and rigidity. Dystonia refers to sustained muscle contractions that result in abnormal postures or repetitive movements. It commonly affects the hands in Wilson's disease. Rigidity, another characteristic feature, involves increased muscle stiffness and resistance to movement. Dystonic smile. A distinctive feature of Wilson's disease is the presence of a dystonic smile. This abnormality is characterized by involuntary contractions of the facial muscles, leading to unusual or contorted facial expressions. Dysdiatocokinesis and lack of coordination. Patients may exhibit dysdiatocokinesis, which refers to impaired ability to perform rapid alternating movements. This can be accompanied by a general sense of clumsiness or lack of coordination. Handwriting abnormalities. Wilson's disease often affects handwriting. It can result in sloppy or untidy writing, but sometimes the handwriting may also become notably small, a condition known as micrographia. Speech abnormalities. While the specific speech abnormalities seen in Wilson's disease are not unique to this condition, they can provide important diagnostic clues. Patients may experience slurred speech, decreased volume, hypophonia, or speech patterns resembling stuttering, echolalia, dysphagia is another possible symptom in Wilson's disease. This can lead to drooling and challenges in controlling the muscles of the lips and face involved in swallowing. Extraocular movements Although less common, abnormal eye movements may be observed in some individuals with Wilson's disease. It is important to note that sensation typically remains unaffected in Wilson's disease, distinguishing it from certain other neurological conditions. When taken together, these clinical findings contribute to the diagnostic evaluation of patients suspected to have Wilson's disease, helping healthcare professionals make informed decisions regarding treatment and management strategies. It is recommended to perform or refer the patient to an ophthalmologist for a slit lamp exam, also known as biomicroscopy. This specialized examination allows for a detailed assessment of ophthalmologic changes, particularly relevant in cases where Wilson's disease is suspected. One notable ophthalmologic finding in Wilson's disease is the presence of Kayser Fleischer rings. These rings are reported to be present in approximately 90% to 95% of patients with neurological or psychiatric manifestations. However, they may be absent in up to 50% of patients who do not exhibit these specific symptoms. It's important to note that the assessment of Kayser Fleischer rings can be challenging at the bedside, particularly in individuals with dark eyes. In the context of Wilson's disease, Kayser Fleischer rings are typically not observed in children who present primarily with liver disease. Additionally, it is important to recognize that while Kayser Fleischer rings are strongly associated with Wilson's disease, they are not specific to this condition. These rings can also be found in patients with chronic cholestatic diseases. These are copper deposits within the cornea, usually best seen at 12 o'clock position by slit lamp exam. In the diagnostic evaluation of patients suspected to have Wilson's disease, 
it is important to conduct a comprehensive set of investigations to gather relevant clinical information. The following tests are typically recommended. 1. Liver function tests. Assessing liver function is crucial in the evaluation of Wilson's disease. These tests help evaluate liver enzymes, bilirubin levels, and other markers of liver health. 2. Serum ceruloplasmin. Measuring the levels of ceruloplasmin, a copper-carrying protein, in the blood can provide important diagnostic information. Low levels of ceruloplasmin are often seen in individuals with Wilson's disease. 3. 24-hour urinary copper measurement. This test involves collecting urine over a 24-hour period to measure the amount of copper excreted. Increased urinary copper levels are commonly observed in Wilson's disease. It is important to note that while these initial investigations are essential, no single test alone can definitively diagnose Wilson's disease. Therefore, a comprehensive approach is necessary, considering multiple factors and test results. In addition to the initial tests, further investigations may be indicated based on the patient's clinical presentation and the results of the initial assessments. Liver function tests, LFTs, typically exhibit abnormal results in individuals with hepatic manifestations of Wilson's disease. At the time of diagnosis, Around 40% to 60% of patients present with elevated levels of aspartate aminotransferase and alanine aminotransferase. Additionally, approximately 12% of patients display increased bilirubin levels, which can be attributed to liver injury, Coombs negative hemolysis, or a combination of both factors. In cases of acute liver failure, reduced albumin levels and prolonged international normalized ratio may be observed, whereas individuals with decompensated cirrhosis may exhibit prolonged INR thrombocytopenia, a mixed pattern of LFTs, and decreased albumin. Regarding patients with neurological manifestations, it is important to note that Alton AST can also be abnormal due to the involvement of the liver, which is commonly observed in these individuals. 24-hour urinary copper measurement. To ensure accurate analysis, it is important to collect the sample in a container that is completely devoid of trace elements. A 24-hour urinary copper level exceeding 100 micrograms is typically indicative of Wilson's disease, providing strong evidence for its presence. If the 24-hour urinary copper level exceeds 40 micrograms, it may suggest the possibility of Wilson's disease and necessitate further investigation. However, it is important to exercise caution as elevated urinary copper excretion can also be observed in cholestatic and autoimmune conditions, as well as protein-losing enteropathy. Therefore, it is crucial to consider additional clinical factors and diagnostic tests when making a diagnosis, rather than relying solely on urine copper values. Ceruloplasmin, which is primarily synthesized in the liver, serves as the primary copper-carrying protein in the bloodstream. A low level of ceruloplasmin provides some supporting evidence for the presence of Wilson's disease. The normal range for ceruloplasmin is typically 200 to 350 mg per liter. However, it is important to note that serum ceruloplasmin levels are not always sufficient for making a definitive diagnosis, as approximately 20% of patients with Wilson's disease may still exhibit results within the normal range. Furthermore, about 1% of the population carries a heterozygous ATP7B mutation, which leads to an intermediate decrease in ceruloplasmin levels. Therefore, the absence of abnormalities in serum ceruloplasmin does not rule out the possibility of Wilson's disease. When assessing serum ceruloplasmin levels for the diagnosis of Wilson's disease, a sensitivity of 77.1% to 99% and a specificity of 55.9% to 82.8% are observed when the levels are below 200 mg per liter. For a more significant indication, a sensitivity of 65.7% to 94.4% and a specificity of 96.6% to 100% can be achieved with serum ceruloplasmin levels below 100 mg per liter in diagnosing Wilson's disease. Possible causes of false negative ceruloplasmin results, despite normal levels, may include hepatic inflammation, pregnancy, hyperestrogenemia, estrogen therapy, or potential overestimation due to immunologic assay inaccuracies. False positive results, indicating low levels, may be observed in cases of a ceruloplasminemia, malabsorption, renal or enteric protein loss, liver diseases such as acute liver failure, decompensated cirrhosis, or end stage disease. Additionally, Individuals who are heterozygotes for Wilson disease can also experience false positive outcomes. In cases where the diagnosis is uncertain based on non-invasive blood and urine tests, 
it is advisable to consider a liver biopsy to assess hepatic parenchymal copper levels, especially in younger patients. For untreated patients, a normal hepatic copper content below 0.64 to 0.8 mcmol per gram dry weight typically rules out the diagnosis of Wilson disease. On the other hand, a hepatic parenchymal copper concentration exceeding 4 mcmol per gram, 250 mcg per gram, dry weight provides the most reliable biochemical evidence of Wilson's disease. MRI of the brain is a valuable tool for evaluating neurological presentations associated with Wilson's disease. The most frequently observed findings on MRI include the following. Hyperintensity observed on T2-weighted images within the basal ganglia. Atrophy of the head of the caudate nucleus, brainstem, cerebral hemispheres, and cerebellar hemispheres. In some cases, a distinctive feature known as the face of the giant panda sign can be visualized on T2-weighted images of the midbrain. While this sign is uncommon, its presence is highly indicative of Wilson's disease. In this image, an axial T2-weighted magnetic resonance scan reveals hyperintensity in the midbrain. Notably, the red nucleus, superior colliculus, part of the pars reticularis of the substantia nigra, and the aqueduct appear relatively spared, as indicated by the presence of hypointensity, marked by white arrows. Despite the vast array of over 700 pathogenic mutations observed in the ATP7B gene, next-generation sequencing has the capacity to identify two pathogenic mutations in the majority of individuals diagnosed with Wilson's disease. Among these mutations, the most prevalent one is the HIS-1069 GLN mutation, which is present in approximately 35-45% to of individuals with the disorder in Europe. In East Asia, the ARG-778 LU mutation can be found in about 30-50% to of individuals with Wilson's disease. The diagnosis of Wilson's disease can be established through a combination of two key factors, the assessment of Kayser-Fleischer rings using a slit lamp examination and a low serum ceruloplasmin level, less than 100 mg per liter. In cases where Kayser-Fleischer rings are not present, the diagnosis can still be made if two or more of the following findings are present. Low serum ceruloplasmin levels, high urinary copper excretion, a positive genetic test indicating an ATP7B gene mutation, or an elevated hepatic parenchymal copper concentration. The Leipzig score proves to be an invaluable tool in the diagnosis of Wilson's disease, serving as a simple and user-friendly method for healthcare professionals to assess the probability of a patient having the condition. This scoring system effectively aids in identifying individuals who require additional testing and treatment. A score within the range of 0 to 1 suggests a low likelihood of Wilson's disease, while a score falling between 2 to 3 indicates a moderate likelihood. On the other hand, a score of 4 to 5 signifies a high likelihood of Wilson's disease. The prognosis of Wilson's disease is severe if left untreated, with potentially fatal outcomes. Without proper treatment, there is a high risk of significant progression of liver disease and subsequent liver failure within a period of 1 to 12 months after discontinuation of treatment. It is worth noting that the majority of untreated patients ultimately succumb to liver disease. In addition to liver-related complications, a minority of untreated patients may also experience fatal complications arising from progressive neurologic disease. Several studies have reported mortality rates ranging from 2% to 21%, with an average follow-up duration of 11.1 to 16.7 years post-diagnosis. These findings underscore the long-term consequences of untreated Wilson's disease.